What's up, everybody? Welcome to DFS by the numbers. These are my full card breakdown and predictions for UFC Vegas 36. We have Darren Till going against Derek Brunson. Uh, 10 fight cards, so it should be a relatively short breakdown here. And we are in Vegas, so hopefully we don't lose any more fights because we really cannot afford to do so. But, I mean, the 10 fights we have, there's some solid ones. I think there's some solid betting opportunities as well. Uh, looking to definitely bounce back from last week, a crazy week last week, where a lot of things to happen that a lot of people expected not to happen, like uh, Muradov getting submitted by Gerald Mearshar, you know, stuff like that. Mana Martinez not knocking out Guido Canetti. Um, just things like that. But, yeah, definitely looking to bounce back here. I do have two bets thus far. Uh, one bet involving the main event and also a max bet. Going to be my second max bet of the year. Hopefully, hopefully that does come through. Um, but yeah, should be a should be a solid card, solid betting opportunities as well. I think we're gonna get some violence, which should be fun as always. Uh, yeah, before we get started and jump into the predictions, if you guys can leave a like on the video, also subscribe if you have not yet. Would really, really appreciate that. Just hit 12k subs as well. So thank you guys so much for all the support. Weekend and week out, going live Friday, 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern time, and then also Saturday, one hour prior to the prelims, uh, did the debut of the new show that will be Saturday called best bet i thought it was very fun um i think a lot of people did enjoy that so tune in to saturday as well lots of good information there lots of great guys on the panel as well so with all that out of the way i say we get into it here and we will start with the first fight of the night that's going to be an absolute banger and jonathan martinez going against marcelo rojo jonathan martinez he is 27 years old a uh, five foot eight with a 69 and a half inch reach and he has 13 and 4 and 3 and 2 in his last five fights. Marcelo Rojo, he is 33 years old, 5 foot 8, 71 inch reach, 16 and 7, and 3 and 2 in his last five fights. So we'll take a look at the odds here. And Jonathan Martinez opened up a big favorite, minus 250. He is currently minus 170. Marcelo Rojo opened up plus 210, and he is currently plus 145. And yeah, I really like this Marcelo Rojo guy. He's very exciting. I think the last 18 of his fights have ended inside the distance. This guy is a kill or be killed fighter. He is very dangerous anywhere the fight goes. An 88% finish rate for Marcelo Rojo, 50% by knockout, 38% by submission. He is a very, very dangerous, but... He's been finished a ton of times. He's been finished four times by submission and once by knockout. Don't really think we'll have to worry about that here with Jonathan Martinez. Jonathan Martinez, I think, has maybe one or two submission um, wins on his record max. Uh, Jonathan Martinez, if he is going to win this fight, it more than likely will be a knockout. But, yeah, very, very close fight here. Jonathan Martinez definitely dropped the ball in his last fight, getting knocked out by, by Davy Grant, uh, which is something you do not like to see as a pretty big favorite as well. Uh, prior to that, did beat Thomas Almeida and Frankie Signs, but... I don't know. Close fight. I'm actually going to take a, a shot on the dog here in terms of a pick. I really like Marcelo Rojo in his fighting style. He uh, kind of just goes after it. He walks forward with a reckless abandon and, and tries to knock out his opponent. And if you're going to knock out by Davy Grant, um, I really do question the chin here. And Rojo is very dangerous, and he hits like an absolute truck. So I'm actually going to take a shot on the dog here in terms of a pick. I don't know if I'll get there from a betting perspective. I think it's more of like a, maybe a violence play under two and a half fight is a good decision. But I'm going to say Marcelo Rojo comes in here and knocks out Jonathan Martinez. So give me Rojo to win, and give me Rojo to win by first round knockout. All right, moving along, we have a very interesting fight here. We have Dolce Langavula going against Mark Andre Berrio. We have Berrio, who is 31 years old, six foot one, 73 inch reach, 12 and four, and two and three in his last five fights. Dolce Langavula, he is 36 years old, five foot eight, 73, 76 inch reach. My bad, 11 and two, and four and one in his last five fights. So there are some stats I want to get into for this fight, as I do think they are pretty important. So. What I like about Mark Andre Barrio is going to be he's very high volume. He lands 5.36 significant strikes per minute with a 48% accuracy. He does absorb 4.79 uh, significant strikes per minute with a positive 0.57 significant strike differential and a 55% striking defense. Very solid numbers there. I love the volume of Barrio. I love the cardio of Barrio as well. On the flip side, it's kind of the complete opposite. Dolce lands 1.85 significant strikes per minute with a 50% accuracy, absorbing 2.27 significant strikes per minute. So he is absorbing more than he's landing, which is something you never like to see. And he also has a negative significant strike differential of 0.42 and get this, a 43% striking defense. Terrible, terrible numbers there in terms of the striking for Dolce. And as you can tell, he's probably going to want to get this down to the mat. And that's kind of what he's good at. He does average 2.07 takedowns per 15 minutes with a 50% accuracy, pretty solid numbers there. And Dolce does have a 75% takedown defense as well. 
Uh, Mark Andre Berrio, on the other hand, averages 0.43 takedowns per 15 minutes with a 25% accuracy, and he does have a 72% takedown defense. So, yeah, I mean, I really like Mark Andre Berrio in this fight. I just think that Dolce can definitely have some success early. Uh, Mark Andre Berrio has been taken down a few times in the UFC. Jungo Park took him down five times. Uh, Christoph Jocko took him down once. Andrew Sanchez took him down twice. So I feel like Dolce can have some success early, but. Um, Mark Anderberry is going to have a massive, massive volume advantage. I think when it's on the feet, it's going to be Mark Anderberry all day. But I do think Dolce can have success at least early. It's going to be very hard to take Mark Anderberryo down. It's going to be even harder to hold him down. And I think, you know, the significant advantage is going to be in the cardio. I think Barrio has phenomenal cardio um, compared to Dolce, which I think he doesn't have the best cardio for sure. So um, I can see Dolce, you know, landing takedowns early, having success early. I just think as the fight goes on, Barrio is going to take over. And, you know, Barrio got a, a late finish in his last fight, landing 141 significant strikes in his last fight. Um, you take a look at Dolce, and he hasn't even totaled 100 significant strikes in his three fights. Uh, 29 against Marcus Perez, 6 against Magomed Ankalaev in, in the fight that went to the third round, and then 32 against Daquan Townsend in a fight that also went to the third round. So, you know, Barrio is just going to be so much higher volume, uh, the better cardio, solid takedown defense, solid get-up game. So, yeah, I like Barrio here quite a bit, and I'm actually going to say that he does find a late finish. Adolcha has been finished in both of his losses, one by knockout, one by submission. And I think Barrio, the volume is just going to be too much for Dolce, and I think he does finish him in the third round there. So give me a third-round finish by knockout for Mark andre Barrio. All right, moving on, we have... A very fun fight. I am looking forward to this fight a ton. We have Charles Jordan going against Juliana Rosa. We have Jordan, who is 25 years old, a five foot nine, 69 inch reach, 11 and three, and one and two and two and one in his last five fights. Juliana Rosa, 32 years old, six foot one, 74 and a half inch reach, a 25 and nine and three and two in his last five fights. So we'll take a look at the odds, and we'll also touch on the odds from the last fight that I did not get to, but uh, Barrio. Open up minus 125, currently minus 155, and then Dolce opened up uh, plus 105, currently plus 135. So getting back to uh, Arosa versus Jordan, Jordan opened up minus 175, he's currently minus 180, and then Arosa opened up plus 150, he is currently plus 155. So yeah, this fight is going to be absolutely phenomenal. Two guys that are finishers. Charles Jordan has never won a, a, a fight by decision. 100% finish rate in 15 fights, 73% by knockout, 27% by submission for a 100% finish rate in total. Uh, Juliana Rosa, a finisher in his own right, a 78% finish rate, 39% by submission, and 39% by knockout. So both guys are very, very dangerous no matter where the fight goes. Charles Jordan is a black belt in BJJ. I know we don't get to see that ground game all that much, but you know a black belt nonetheless. But on the feet is uh, where I think the big difference is going to be. Charles Jordan hits very, very, very hard. And Erosa is very, very, very chinny. And he's very hittable as well. I do want to get into some numbers, but just to kind of show you how hittable Julian Erosa is, he absorbs 5.78 significant strikes per minute with a 50% a striking defense. He blocks punches with his face, and he definitely doesn't have the chin to back it up because Erosa has been knocked out five times in his career and that is not co counting the ultimate fighter where he also got knocked out as well so no striking defense no chin against somebody that hits like as hard as Jordan. it seems like an absolute recipe for disaster so yeah i like Jordan here quite a bit you do see that arosa is going to be you know much bigger he's going to have a four inches a four inch height advantage he's going to have a five and a half inch reach advantage but man he's so hittable he got knocked out just in june Coming back way too early. I think he gets knocked out here again for like the for like the sixth time in his career. Jordan just so dangerous and hits so hard. And if you're that hittable and you're going against a guy that hits this hard, there's a good chance that you do get knocked out. So um, especially, you know, Rose is coming in on short notice as well. Just gives you another reason to, to really like Jordan in the spot. So, yeah, I do like Jordan. I'm going to take him to win by first round knockout. I think violence in this fight in terms of a bet is something to definitely consider. But uh, I do think that Jordan is going to finish Julian Rosa here. I guess one thing that you still got to mention is going to be the durability of Jordan. He has been hurt before. He has been knocked out before or knocked down before, but he's never been knocked out in 15 fights and he's never been submitted in 15 fights as well, where on the other side, we've seen Arosa finished more often than not. So another reason to like Jordan there as well. I'll take Jordan to win and I will take him to win by first round. Brutal, brutal knockout. 
All right, next we have a fight that was supposed to be Jack Shore versus Syed Nurmagomedov, and then it was supposed to be Jack Shore versus, I forget his name, uh, somebody that's undefeated, but now he's getting his third opponent change in a row going against uh, Ludovic Shulian, something like that. Can't pronounce it that great, but Ludovic, he is on. He was on the Ultimate Fighter. He went one and one. I do believe was able to watch both of those fights. Uh, going against Jack Shore, who is a very highly touted prospect to, to say the least. A lot of people are very high on this guy, including me. But getting into the tail of tape here, Jack Shore. He is 26 years old, uh, five foot eight, 71 inch reach, 14 and 0, and uh, obviously five and 0 in his last five fights. Where we have Ludovic, he is 31 years old, 5 10, 70 inch reach. Uh, nine and one and four and one in his last five fights. We'll take a look at the odds, and you see that uh, Jack Shore is the biggest favorite on the card. Open at minus 265, and he is currently minus 500. And honestly, for an absolute good reason. I mean, what is Ludovic good at? Uh, solid wrestler. I think he's very sloppy on his takedown attempts. Doesn't really set it up well, but a solid wrestler nonetheless. A very strong guy as well. And then he's also a, a solid grappler as well. So, you know, what is what is Jack Shore good at? The exact same thing. He's an even better wrestler. He's an even better grappler. A legit BJJ black belt in Jack Shore. And I liked what I saw in his last fight against um, Hunter Azure in terms of this matchup because Hunter Azure uh, was 0 for 6 on takedowns against Jack Shore. Showed that Jack Shore has very good takedown defense, and I think he's going to need it here uh, against Ludovic, who's probably going to try to get Jack Shore on the mat, which... Again, probably not a good idea, but he's not going to be able to strike with Jack Shore because, man, I'm not a big fan of Ludovic and his striking. Um, walks forward with his hands down, very, very hittable. I think Jack Shore, I mean, you think of Jack Shore as a grappler, but I think he's going to have a massive striking advantage here. So, you know, in terms of the of the wrestling grappling, I, I favor Jack Shore there tremendously. Um, and the striking, I favor him there quite a bit as well. I just don't see where uh, Ludovic does beat Jack Shore here, especially coming in on short notice, like it was already a, a tough enough fight, right, against Jack Shore, but you factor in the short notice aspect as well, like how does Ludovic win this fight? Um, he's not going to submit uh, a legit black belt in Jack Shore. Is he going to take him down and control him? I just find that hard to believe. So I like Jack Shore anywhere this fight goes, on the mat, on the feet especially. I think he's going to have a massive advantage there. Just did not like what I saw from Ludovic on the feet. Like I said, one shot at a time, very low volume, barely throws anything, and is very hittable as well. But very tough guy, relies on his chin. Um, but yeah, I think Jack Shore does win this fight, especially considering it is going to be short notice for Ludovic, whereas Jack Shore has been, you know, had a full camp. So give me Jack Shore here all day. And I actually am going to say that Jack Shore does find a finish eventually in that third round. I think he's going to put on a crazy pace on Ludovic here. And I think the short notice aspect is going to really hurt Ludovic. And I think Jack Shore does finish him in that third round by whoever he wants. I'll, I'll say submission, but I could see a ground and pound victory as well for Jack Shore. So give me Jack Shore to win. Would have honestly liked to see that uh, that Syed, uh, Syed Nurmagomedov fight a little bit more. But, you know, Ludovic's getting a shot here. Ultimate fighter guy. Good guy. He's good. He's very good, Ludovic. But... Uh, Jack Shore just on a, a whole other level anywhere the fight goes. So give me Jack Shore to win. Third round finish. All right, now we have the people's main event. Uh, Jin Young Kim going against Molly McCann. We have Molly McCann who is 31 years old, 5'4", with a 62-inch reach, 10-4, and four, and 3-2 and two in her last five fights. Jin Young Kim, uh, 31 years old as well, 5'7", 72-inch reach, 9-3, and 3-2 and three and two in her last five fights. So I do want to get into some stats on this fight as I do think they're important, but first we'll take a look at the odds, and they are very close. Molly McCann opened up as a plus 165 dog, currently minus 107. And Ji Young Kim opened up minus 190, and she is currently minus 113. So I do want to get into the stats, like I said. We'll start with Molly McCann. And what I really like about Molly McCann is going to be her output. She lands 5.15 significant strikes per minute with a 50% accuracy. That 50% is going to be important here in a second, and I'll tell you why. Uh, she does absorb 4.28 significant strikes per minute with a positive 0.87 significant strike differential and a 65% striking defense. Very solid numbers uh, from Molly McCann in terms of the striking. Uh, Jin Young Kim, she's very high volume herself, landing 4.50 significant strikes per minute but with a horrible 34 percent striking accuracy and you can see it like when you watch tape on kim like she misses so much that it that it's crazy like she has no striking accuracy whatsoever and she's going to have a 10 inch reach advantage it's just you know kim just she just doesn't use it at all she misses a ton she misses a lot more than she lands and that's why you do see that 34 percent accuracy on paper in the stats um she's also very hittable absorbing 4.94 Significant strikes per minute with a negative 0.44 significant strike differential and a 57% striking defense. So, you know, of course, you know, the 
The, the numbers do favor Molly McCann here. Of course, Kim is going to have a 10-inch reach advantage, but again, it's just not something she really uses. So I actually do favor Molly McCann ever so slightly in the striking. I just don't like what I see from Kim in terms of doing a lot of missing. I mean, she throws a lot, don't get me wrong, but man, does she miss a lot. Um, in terms of the wrestling, grappling aspect of the fight, and this is where I think it's a pretty big point to make. Molly McCann does average 1.64 takedowns per 15 minutes with a 29% takedown accuracy, and she has a 28% takedown defense. Molly McCann cannot stuff a takedown. Luckily, she will not have to worry about that here, where uh, Kim averages zero takedowns per 15 minutes. I think she shot maybe one takedown in her career. Kim has a 0% accuracy, and Kim also has a 42% takedown defense. So what I like for McCann in this fight is A, she has the better striking accuracy. I do favor her in the striking, although she has a 10-inch reach disadvantage. But if things aren't going well on the feet, I think she can mix it up here. You take a look at Molly McCann, and she actually does attempt quite a few takedowns. I think she attempts like nearly five takedowns per fight, and that's huge here against Kim, who cannot stuff a takedown, 42% takedown defense, she can be stuck on her back as well, so yeah, um, you know, I, I like Molly McCann here quite a bit, I like Molly McCann to win by decision, uh, Kim is very tough, she's never been knocked out, um, I like McCann here. I like McCann to, you know, have success on the feet. If it's not going how she wants on the feet, just mixing the takedowns. I mean, it's something she does anyway. And something I, I do want to point out, Uncle Weezy brought this up. We meet him, we're talking. And you take a look at Molly McCann has been losing to as of late. And it's people that are going to take her down. Uh, Laura Procopio took down Molly McCann seven times. Uh, Talia Santos took her down five times. Jillian Robinson took her down two times, submitted her. You take a look at her three UFC losses. Grappler, grappler, and grappler. So I think that's very important to note there that she's losing to people that want to take her down. Is Jin Young Kim going to want to take her down? Absolutely not. So yeah, I like Molly McCann here. I like a lot of things about her in this fight. And uh, I like her to win by decision. So give me Molly McCann to win by decision here. All right, next we have probably actually the, the people's main event here. I think it's going to be a very good fight. Two guys that I'm really looking forward to see go against each other. Like two guys that are legit grapplers, two very exciting fighters as well, and uh, should be a very good fight here. So we have Patty Pimblett making his UFC debut here. He has 26 years old, 5'10", 16 and 3, and 3 and 2 in his last five fights. Going against Luigi Vandermini, he is 25 years old, 5'8", 73 inch reach, 9 and 2. And three and two in his last five fights. We'll take a look at the odds here. Patty Pimble opened up minus 135, currently minus 145, and Luigi Vandermini opened up plus 115, and he is currently plus 125. Man, this is this is such a tough fight to call because you take a look at the striking, and I, I do probably favor Luigi Vandermini there. I'm not the highest on his striking, but he does come forward. He throws absolute bombs. Um, has finished 56% of his wins by knockout in Luigi, so I do think he has a, a striking advantage. But again, I'm not all that impressed with Luigi's striking. But where I really am impressed is going to be the grappling of Luigi Vandermini. This guy is a legit BJJ black belt, which makes this matchup very interesting because Patty Pimblett is a legit BJJ black belt as well. But um, you know, watching tape on the two. The one thing that stood out to me is going to be the wrestling. I think the wrestling, um, there's a big difference between the two. Luigi Vandermini, thus far in the UFC, has an 8% takedown accuracy. I think it's like 1 for 16 on takedown attempts, whereas Patty, you know, he's able to get guys down to the mat early and often. He fights to his strength, and that, that strength is getting the fight down to the mat. So I think the big difference in this fight is going to be if this fight does hit the mat or or when it does because it definitely will. I do favor Patty to be the one to be, to be on top and getting the takedowns. The problem is, you know, what's going to happen when it does hit the mat? Both guys are very, very good. I just think that Patty is going to have more opportunities to get the takedown and be on top. What happens on the mat? I'm not sure. Both these guys are phenomenal on the mat. That's why it's such an exciting fight. But yeah, I mean, the odds... Seem a little bit off. I think it should be closer to a pick -em. I'm kind of having a problem, you know, picking a side here, but I think the wrestling will be key. I think Patty being on top, um, having opportunities to be on top is going to be key as well. The striking is very interesting. I, I do probably favor Luigi there, but I think this fight is going to primarily play out on the mat. I think we're going to see a, fun, a ton of fun scrambles, and I don't know if somebody gets submitted here. Both guys have never been submitted besides Patty, which was like 2013. Uh, Luigi, of course, has never been submitted, but he has been knocked out before. Uh, I'll take Patty Pimblett. Not too confident in this pick, but I think the wrestling and uh, the strength is going to be the difference here. So I'll take Patty to win, and I'll take him to win by top control, takedowns, 
and uh, win a decision here. But, man, it's going to be dangerous going to the mat with uh, Luigi Vandermini, who is also a very legit grappler. Cannot wait to see this fight. Um, probably my favorite fight on the card. All right, next we have an interesting fight. We have Modestus Bukowskis going against Khalil Roundtree. Bukowskis, 27 years old, 6'3", with a 78-inch reach, 11-4, and 3-2 and and in his last five fights. Khalil Roundtree, 31 years old, 6'1", 74-inch reach, 11 and, or 8-5, and 2-3 and and in his last five fights. We'll take a look at the odds here, and we see that Bukowskis is a pretty decent-sized favorite. Um, open up plus 130, dog. He's now minus 152, and Khalil Roundtree is... Plus 132, open up minus 150. So the line actually flipped there right away. And it's a tough fight to call. I mean, Roundtree fights are are very tough to call just based off the fact that you don't know which Khalil Roundtree is going to show up. Sometimes this guy shows up and looks like a million bucks like he did in the Anders fight where he knocked him down four times. Or sometimes, um, you know, Khalil Roundtree shows up and he, and he looks like crap like he did in his last fight against Marcin Paracnew in a fight where everybody thought that Roundtree was going to knock out Prochnio and knock him out in the first round. Prochnio had three knockout losses in the UFC all in the first round. Roundtree has a ton of first round finishes, has a ton of power. Everybody, including me, thought that Roundtree was going to knock him out. And he actually loses a decision getting outlanded 102 to 49 against Marcin Prochnio. So I definitely get why Roundtree is the dog here. A lot of people, including me, are probably low on him. But man, I think it's a very winnable fight for him. And going against Modestus Bukowskis, who I'm not too high on. I mean, the guy's very hittable, 50% striking defense. And I think he's very chinny as well. He's been knocked out multiple times. I've seen him knocked down multiple times as well. And Roundtree does one thing very good, and that is that power. Roundtree has a ton of power. It's just, you know, will Roundtree show up or, or not? That's why... I cannot put too much faith and confidence into this pick. That's why I'm not betting Roundtree. But as far as a, a pure pick goes, I think I'm going to take Roundtree to, to knock out Modestus Bukowskis in the, fir, in the first round. Would I be shocked if it kind of played out like the Prachnio fight where you know Roundtree kind of just stood there for three rounds? No, I would not. But would I be shocked if Roundtree came in here and just knocked out a very hittable, a very chinny Bukowskis? No, I would not as well. But um, yeah, Roundtree fights are just so tough to pick. So tough to pick. One time, he, one time he shows up, one time he doesn't. So we'll see what happens. I will take Roundtree to win by first round knockout, but it's hard to trust this guy at this point. I mean, losing to Prachnio is definitely not a good look, but here's another fight where he has an opportunity to, to land a big shot and find the knockout, and I'll actually pick him to do so, but uh, just not with much confidence there. But I will take Roundtree to win by first round knockout. All right, next we have a very exciting fight here. Two guys that are, are very exciting to watch. They're always in very exciting fights. We have Alex Morono going against David Zawada. Morono is 31 years old, 5'11", 72-inch reach, 19-7, and seven, and 3-2 and in his last five fights. David Zawada, he is 31 years old, 6'75", reach, 17-6, and 2-3 and and in his last five fights. We'll take a look at the odds here. And we do have Morono. Opening up as a minus 180 favorite, currently minus 138. And then Zawada opening up plus 155 and currently plus 118. Yeah, very tricky fight to call here. I do want to get into some of the stats as I do think they're important. So, yeah, one thing I, I do like about Moreno quite a bit is going to be the volume from him. I mean, he lands 5.05 significant strikes per minute with a 42% accuracy, absorbing only 3.69 with a positive 1.36 Significant strike differential and a 56% striking defense. Very solid numbers there for Moreno. Um, I love the volume out of the guy. As far as David Zawada, he does land 3.24 significant strikes per minute with a 40% accuracy, absorbing 4.07 with a negative uh, 0 0.83 significant strike differential and a 54% striking defense. Um, I do favor the striking of Moreno. I favor the volume of Moreno, but man... David Zawada is very, very dangerous no matter where the fight goes. On the feet, he has a ton of power. He throws very hard, as does Moreno. So I think it's going to be very interesting on the feet as far as the ground games between the two. So Moreno is a black belt in BJJ. It's just not something he uses all that much. I'm going to take a look at the matchup template here, uh, courtesy of Uncle Wheezy. And Morono has only attempted 16 takedowns in the UFC. I do not like to see that. Has a 25% accuracy. And Zawada has attempted 10 takedowns in four fights. So something that really stuck out to me looking at the, the stats here is going to be David Zawada um, getting controlled for 34.79% of the time. 
Uh, that's quite a bit. I think Roberts controlled him for like eight minutes. Um, Ameev controlled him for a decent amount of time as well. And I think that if Morono goes to the takedowns here, I mean, he's going to have a ton of success. I mean, we've seen Zawada taking down um, four times against Ameev, uh, once against Nurmagomedov in a fight where he was able to get that triangle, um, once against the leech. And then he was not taken down by Roberts, but Roberts was able to reverse, reverse him multiple times and end up, end up getting about nine minutes of control time. So, yeah, I think Morono, if he does go to that ground game, I think he can take down Zawada, who has a poor takedown defense. And I think he can control him a little bit, stay safe on top as well. It's just you take a look at Morono, and it's not something he does as much as you really like to see. But, yeah, I'm going to take Morono here. I think he's the better fighter. But what I will say is Zawada is very, very dangerous no matter where the fight goes. Morono has never been submitted, so that's good for him there. But Morono has been knocked out, so he's got to avoid that big shot of Zawada. But I think the volume difference is going to be key here. I think Morono is the better striker. And I think if he wants to go to that ground game, I think he'll have a ton of success down there. So I'll take Morono for the win. But uh, this is going to be a very good fight regardless. I'll take Morono to win. And I'll take him to win. Ah, I'll go knockout. I'll go knockout win for Alex Morono. All right, co event. Very exciting fight here. Uh, Tom Aspinall, somebody that people are very high on, and Sergey Spivak, a fighter, in my opinion, is very underrated. Uh, we have Tom Aspinall, who is 28 years old, 6 foot 5, 78 inch reach, 10 and 2, and 5 and 0 in his last five fights. Sergey Spivak, he is 26 years old, 6 foot 3, 78 inch reach, 13 and 2, and 4 and 1 in his last five fights. We'll take a look at the odds here. And Tom Aspinall is, the, I believe, the second biggest favorite on the entire card. If I can find it, uh, Tom Aspinall opened up as a minus 300 favorite. He's currently minus 250, and then Sergey Spivak opened up plus 240. He's currently plus 210. So some money is coming in on the Spivak side, and I definitely understand it. Um, it's a it's a weird fight because Aspinall, you know, he's a very good fighter. I, I love his striking. I love the volume from him. You know, in terms of heavyweight, landing 7.43 significant strikes per minute with a 66% accuracy, phenomenal numbers, and he throws with a ton of power as well. The problem I have is, you know, there's still some some question marks with Tom Aspinall, um, and there's still some red flags for me, especially concerning this matchup. Tom Aspinall, prior to the Andre Arlovsky fight, he had zero wins outside of the first round. And you saw in that Arlovsky fight, man, it looked like he was slowing down, but luckily he was able to go in and get a submission win. So, you know, what does Tom Aspinall look like over that one and a half round mark because we haven't seen him get a win over that one and a half round mark we haven't seen him get a win in that third round what does he look like later in the fight another thing is i still have question marks about his takedown defense i mean he is 100 percent takedown defense thus far in the ufc but nobody's tried to take him down yet and i went back and watched tape on aspinall um and this was five six years ago so take it as you will i'm assuming he's improving I'm assuming he's improving that takedown defense a lot, but I saw him get taken down like a lot more than I wanted to in terms of, you know, laying minus 300 on here. He got taken down multiple times. I saw him get reversed. I saw him get stuck on bottom, and I even saw him get submitted. But again, those fights were four or five, six years ago. You got to assume he's making improvements, but, you know, we still haven't seen those improvements because nobody's really tried to take him down in the last few years. Uh, Sergey Spivak, what is he good at? He's very good at wrestling. His striking is coming along. Um, he does go for quite a bit of takedowns, landing almost three takedowns per 15 minutes with a 63% takedown accuracy. So the path to victory is there for Ser Sergey Spivak. The path to victory is going to be getting this out of the first round, getting takedowns early and often. The problem I'm having with that is going to be the short notice aspect of things. Spivak is coming in on short notice. I do not like that in this matchup because how does Spivak win this fight? wrestle for 15 minutes is he going to have the, the the gas tank to wrestle for 15 minutes against a big Aspinall I don't think so I mean we saw in his last fight against Alexia Linick it was so weird like it was the third round and Alexia Linick looked like the fresher guy in the third round compared to Spivak Spivak was so tired and it's going to be a, a big tough 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 test to come in here and take down a guy as big as Aspinall 6-5 Aspinall for three rounds on short notice. If this fight was not on short notice, I might actually be taking a shot on Spivak here. It's just, I don't see him having the cardio to keep that up for three rounds. But uh, yeah, I got, I got Aspinall here. I don't like the short notice aspect, but going forward, I still have question marks about Aspinall. Maybe maybe some will get answered here. Maybe his take on defense will look phenomenal, but from what I've seen, and I remind you, it was four or five years ago. What I've seen, it was him get taken down a lot more than I wanted to. But um, I will take Aspen to get a finish some point in this fight. Could be early, could be later. If Spivak really does gas out 
Um, but I will take Aspinall to win by knockout. Nonetheless, Spivak has been knocked out before by Walt Harris in like the first 20 seconds of the fight. I could see either that happening or I can see Spivak wrestling for a round and a half, completely gassing out and maybe Aspinall getting a late finish as well. So I will take Aspinall though. I, I don't love the line. He's going to be a very popular parlay piece this week. I uh, would caution on parlays this week, by the way, a lot of very close fights. Um, but I will pick Aspinall to win and I'll take him to win by knockout as well. All right, main event time. Uh, before we get started, I do want to remind you guys that me and Uncle Weezy did a main event deep dive, uh, went deep into this fight. I'll kind of give a condensed version here, but lots of good stuff on that. If you have not checked it out, go check that out as soon as possible. But we have Darren Till going against Derek Brunson. We have Till, who is 28 years old, 6 foot, 75 inch reach, 18, 3 and 1, and 2 and 3 in his last five fights. Derek Brunson, 37 years old, 6 foot 1, 77 inch reach, uh, 22 and 7. And four and one in his last five fights. So one thing I want to point out right off the bat is going to be first the odds, and then we'll get to what I want to point out. Um, Darren Till seems like a, such a this line's so off. I mean, Darren Till opens up minus one thirty, and he's now minus one eighty. And uh, Brunson opened up plus one ten, and he's currently plus one fifty five. And I'll kind of talk about why I think that line's off. And first, I want to talk about the level of competition as of late. So. You know, Derek Brunson has fought, you know, some of the best guys throughout his career. But as of late, I mean, you take a look at some of the guys he's been facing in his last five fights. So he had that loss to Israel Adesanya. But after that, he goes in, he beats Elias Theodoru. After that, he goes in and he beats Ian Heinish. After that, he goes in and, and beats Edmund Shabazian. And then after that, he goes in and, and beats Derek, uh, Kevin Holland. And then you take a look at Till. Who has Till fought in the last four fights? Robert Whitaker, you know, Kelvin Gastelum, Jorge Masvidal, and Tyron Woodley, Stephen Thompson. So as of late, you know, Darren Till is fighting the, the much, much better competition. You know, whereas, you know, Darren Till's fighting, you know, a, a good, at the time, Tyron Woodley, Derek Brunson is fighting Elias Theodoro. So take that as you will. But I do want to get into some stats. And this is why I definitely disagree with the line here. Uh, Darren Till is just so low volume that it's it's, it's insane. Uh, me and Uncle Weezy talked about it. The most significant strikes that Darren Till has ever landed in a fight was 49. 49 significant strikes. That is terrifying because, you know, what happens if Darren Till does not knock out Derek Brunson? Uh, Brunson has a very good chance just to, you know, throw more and to do more. Brunson does land more significant strikes per minute at 3.46 with a 47% accuracy absorbing 2.72 significant strikes per minute with a positive 0.74 significant strike differential and a 53% strike in defense. On the flip side, Till, very low volume, landing 2.27 significant strikes per minute with a 46% accuracy, absorbing 2.99 significant strikes per minute with a negative 0.72 significant strike differential and a 58% strike in defense. So I don't love that, especially seeing Till at minus 180 because if Darren Till does not knock out Brunson, is he going to look like a minus 180 favorite? I, I just don't think so. I just don't think so, especially, you know, mixing in the wrestling as well. Derek Brunson, very good wrestler, averages 3.11 takedowns per 15 minutes. Uh, Darren Till, 82% takedown defense. But you kind of take a look through the record of, of Darren Till, and he's facing guys that really aren't looking for takedowns all that much. I mean, Robert Whitaker took him down twice. Robert Whitaker typically averages like 0.64 takedowns per 15 minutes. Kelvin Gastelum um, took him down once. Kelvin Gastelum averages about a takedown per 15 minutes. Um, Jorge Masvidal. Uh, Tyron Woodley's a great wrestler, but he never tries to wrestle anybody. Stephen Thompson, Donald Cerrone, you know, guys like Justin Iari, Nicholas Dalby took him down twice. But outside of that, like this is going to be um, the best wrestler that Till has fought, which is concerning because I think that Derek Brunson can mix in takedowns here or there. The problem with that is I don't think Derek Brunson has great cardio. He was able to go five rounds with Kevin Holland in his last fight, and man, did he look tired late in that fight, and Kevin Holland gave zero resistance in terms of, you know, just got taken down and, and didn't really try to get up, whereas Till, I think there's going to be a lot more resistance. Uh, Till has a much better takedown defense and the much better get-up game, and Till actually attempts to get up like, like a Kevin Holland. So, although I think Brunson can have success in getting takedowns, do I think he can sustain that for 25 minutes? Absolutely not. I don't think he has the cardio to do so. And we saw in the Holland fight at one point, man, uh, Brunson got hurt bad. 
and he looked so sketchy on the feet. I forget which round it was, maybe the third or fourth round, but there was a point where he just looked so sketchy on the feet, and I had a bet on Brunson. I was like, shoot a takedown, and he was, of course, was able to get it easily, but if he's in that same situation with Darren Till, is he going to be able to get Darren Till down as easily as he did Kevin Holland? I just don't think so. I have question marks about the, the cardio of Derek Brunson, and I have serious question marks about the durability of Derek Brunson, especially considering how hard the Darren Till hits. So, it's a tough fight to call. I, I think the line's absolutely off, but I am going to pick Darren Till by knockout. Darren Brunson has been finished a handful of times. I don't think he has the best chin, and it only takes one shot from Darren Till. Um, I can see a situation where Brunson goes for takedowns early, kind of slows down as the fight goes on, and eventually gets finished. Or I can see a situation where, it, you know, it's a close fight, close competitive fight, up until Darren Till lands that one big shot. He's going to have 25 minutes to do it. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't really bet the money line of Till. If you do like Till, I'd probably bet the knockout prop. It's just really hard to see him, you know, winning a decision here, considering Brunson probably honestly outvolumes him. And then on top of that, Brunson has the ability to also mix in the takedowns as well. So I think if Till wins, it's going to be by knockout. Um, Derek Brunson has been knocked out five times in his seven losses. So yeah, I'll pick Darren Till to win. Um, don't like the money line. But I will pick him to win by knockout. I think he gives Derek Brunson his uh, sixth knockout loss there. All right, guys, that is about it. Those are the predictions for this week. Kind of a shorter video this week. If you guys can leave a like, that'd be much, much appreciated. Also, subscribe to the channel going live Friday, 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. And then also going live Saturday, one hour prior to the prelims, the new show, Best Bet, where we give the best bet for each and every fight on the card. Me, Z's MMA, Narco Cop, and then also Uncle Wheezy, who was not able to make the first um, showing, but is going to be back this week. So that is about it, guys. Good luck, and let's make some money for UFC Vegas 36. Talk to you guys soon.